Well, we're back with uh, John Vislay of, uh, do you call it Vislay Estate Vineyard? Is that what it is? Vislay Vineyards. Vislay Vineyards, okay. Um, total production for you here? Uh, just under 3,000 cases. Okay. And the variety that you're using the most for, uh, it's, for it's, wine? It's fairly well distributed between the varietals. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Chardonnay, the Bordeaux Blend, uh, Petit Saron Zin are... are highest number of, of uh, cases that we produce, um, although probably our most delicate and um, um, most widely acclaimed is our Pinot. Okay. Uh, so when you're making wine, um, actually who is the winemaker here? I am. You are, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just want to make sure. When you're making wine, do you have kind of like in your mind's eye a vision of what you want it to be stylistically? And, and if so, what is that? Um, we, we are really, we, I guess I want to say a minimalist approach. Mm -hmm. um, my job is, I feel like my job as a winemaker is don't get in the way. You know, the, the fruit, if we, if we grow good fruit, um, and this vineyard, you know, I, I like to say our fruit rocks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have some really, really nice fruit here. And my job, the fruit, you know, comes in and it's, it's, it's here. My job is not to let it go this way. Right. My job is to keep it here all the way through. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes it's it's difficult, but, and we don't want to really, um, we don't we won't want high alcohol wines. We're not trying to make cocktails here. Um, we we really want kind of fruit forward wines. I don't want something that's overly oaked and um, and um, heavy. Um, I, want, I want a wine that, you know, when you're tasting that wine, you're tasting the fruit and um, and I feel like that's kind of my job, is to let the fruit be the star of the show. Okay. Well, let's see. You have three wines here. Why don't you take us through them one by one? Sure. Um, I, we brought out uh, uh, our 2010 Pinot. Um, there's uh, just a ton of black cherry in this wine. Mm -hmm. um, we grow the Pumard clone, uh, mm -hmm. so it's 100% it's Pumard. And, and this wine's available now. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, this wine we released in uh, March of this year. Mm -hmm. um, we have a 91 uh, rating on it from uh, the wine enthusiast. Wonderful. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. Um, it's just a, a, a wine that uh, people just really have, have been enjoying. And now I'm, I'm, I'm under 100 cases left. And the original amount that you made is? Uh, we only made 150 cases. About 150 cases. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, you have a pretty interesting let's say wine club here it's called the barrel club could you talk a little bit about that oh yeah yeah that is um, there's a lot of folks that would like to be um, would, would like to make wine and um, I've come across various wine uh, barrel clubs so to speak where folks are able to go in and use a facility bring in some fruit and make their own barrel of wine mm -hmm. um, what we've decided to do was that in that instance, when somebody wants to try to give that a shot, um, rather than bringing in outside fruit, um, we're willing to work with folks that want to make a barrel of Zin or a barrel of Petit or Cabernet or Merlot or Chardonnay, and um, you know we, we'll we'll work with them and help them through that whole process of um, you know picking out their yeast, doing the punch downs, doing you know, all, all of each and every step of, of the way. They can be as involved as they want. They can be out here picking fruit, sorting the fruit, making sure there's no leaves, getting anything um, that's, you know, uh, maybe an undeveloped berry or whatever. Um, they can get that involved. Or they can say, you know, I can look it up here on the weekend. You know, I'll, I'll be available to do some punch downs. And, you know, and, and if that's the case, we're essentially making the wine um for them, so to speak. Sure. Um, That's a great experience. And they actually could, and the end production is about 24 cases that they get, right? Exactly. So they could get together with some friends. Split up uh, the barrel. Split it up and walk away with a bunch of cases of wine that they've actually made. Yeah, they've made it. It's Russian River Fruit. They can design their own label. Um, they can, like I said, they can be as involved as they want to be mm -hmm. and um, and do it um, essentially at, 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 at wholesale prices. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because... We're we're really focusing more on um, what what drives the price is the the, the fruit itself. Mm -hmm. So it's like buying um, you know a ton of grapes because essentially that's what we're doing. Right. Is we're using it takes a little bit you know out, out of a ton you get 
um, a barrel plus, mm -hmm. and you need that plus for topping wine. Right, um, right. Because during the course of a year, you're going to lose 10 to maybe 15 percent uh, through evaporation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the number one job when you're making wine is keep that barrel full, keep everything clean, mm -hmm. and um, so so we'll go through and you know on a on a very regular basis uh, top those barrels with that topping wine, that extra wine that we made. Right, right. You know, getting back to this Pinot that, that we're tasting right now, it's it's kind of an elegant, um, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but I mean, it, it, first of all, it's Riley correct. I mean, there's no doubt that this is a Russian River Pinot in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, um, it, it does have that, um, I like to say, hard candy um, flavor to it a little bit. But the thing that strikes me the most about it is how delicate it is. I mean, it's, it's really, it's not a heavy-handed, um, high alcohol, uh, highly extracted Pinot Noir. Right. I, mean, I mean, I see what you mean about pretty much letting the grape um, guide you yeah. as to where the wine's going to go. Yeah. It's very nice. Very, um, I, I can see where this would go with a lot of really nice foods in terms of food pairing. It, it wouldn't know oh, where yeah. to take the food. Yeah. Yeah, great. And it goes, you know, Pinots go well with, um, you know, Gorgonzola. Um, you know, and it doesn't have to be a, um, even uh, restricted to just uh, say um, salmon. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can you can do you can have a nice um, uh, barbecue with this. Right. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that that, that it will pair up with nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, there's enough acid, um, you know, to you know to to be able to interact with the fruit the food. Okay. Would it be okay if we use nature's dump bucket here and move on to the next That's line? the rule of thumb here. <laughs> <laughs> if, right. it's, if I pour you too much or it's not your style, then no, no, re return just, it to the earth, as I like we, to say. We are tasting, after all, not drinking. That's, that's right. <laughs> and, and for those watching, uh, we're here at about uh, you know 9.15 in the morning. <laughs> all right, so this next wine... We call Five Vines. Okay, and all right. Five Vines because... It contains all five of the Bordeaux varietals. Okay. And this is um, this this is the 2008, mm -hmm. and it is uh, well. It's primarily all all of the five vines are primarily Merlot. Uh, so this is 46% Merlot and 29% Cabernet, and then we fill the rest in with the uh, Malbec, Petit Verdot, and Cab Franc. Right. So in essence, this is your Bordeaux Bordeaux this blend. This is our Bordeaux blend. Yeah. Uh, we won a gold medal for it last year. Um, this was. Up, in, up until the release of the um, the, the 2010 Pinot, um, this was our number one selling wine. Okay. And the production on this? Uh, about 375 cases. 375. Once again, you, you have a style in winemaking that, that for me is, is kind of, um, it, you know, it's smooth, it's, it's elegant. What's the price point on the Pinot, by the way? 45. 45, and then this five vines? 35. 35, okay. Um, yeah, it's a very smooth, um, almost, I, I don't want to say light because it's got a lot of richness to it, but, but um, you know, elegant, it, uh, you know, yeah, it's, subtle. Um, it's not a heavy Cabernet. No, no, not, a, not an overdone wine at all. Um, what is the barrel treatment on, on this uh, Bordeaux blend? Um, it's about 30% new oak. Mm -hmm. um, and Vizlay is a Hungarian name, and right. we like to use a lot of Hungarian barrels. There you go. Okay. And um, the Hungarian barrels are actually, um, it's the same species as French. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just that the growing climate is a little different, and, um, and the wood is a little denser. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as flavor profiles, um, it's very difficult to distinguish, in my opinion, uh, the Hungarian from the French. Right. And, and the Pinot Noir, how long in oak? Uh, that actually went a little longer than, mm -hmm. um, than, than you might think. We were, um, and that was really due more to uh, bottling constraints. Mm -hmm. um, but that was, uh, that was 13 months. 13 months and the Bordeaux blend, the five vines? The Bordeaux blend was about 28 months. 28 months, so we okay. So we were over two years in the barrel there. And and the minority of the oak is new, so therefore I don't taste very much oak in here. I mean, it's it's no. more of a structure thing for the wine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, you you need it. Uh, there's no doubt that mm -hmm. you, you know that 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 new oak, um, the way that the tannins in, the oak tannins interact with the grape tannins, 
Um, the flavor profile, the toasting is very important on the barrels. Right. Um, yeah, so all those things come into play. But it's just like a, it's a recipe where, um, you know, you're, you're, you're getting a little bit of spice, you know, you're, you're from your spice cabinet, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, mm -hmm. and you're pulling it together. Right, absolutely. Wonderful. All right, so we'll move on to the next wine, which is a Petit Syrah. This is our 2009 Petit Syrah. Current vintage for you? To yes. On the market? Okay. It is. Um, I do have some uh, 2007. Um, it's quickly becoming a library wine. Mm -hmm. um, we recently won a double gold best of class for the 2009 Petit Syrah down at the North of the Gate competition. Okay. So we're very happy about that. And if somebody wants to uh, buy your wines, uh, where are they available? Um, right here at the winery and online on our website. Okay. Got it. All right. Let's see what we have here for Petit Syrah. Hmm. I really enjoy the nose on this. Yeah. I mean, it, uh, it, is, it is, it's the pure fruit. And that's the other thing about um, the verasion that we were speaking of earlier. Mm -hmm. um, now is when we're going to start um, even having those fruity aromas vers versus the herbaceous aromas. Right. Um, you know, where it's kind of, when, you, when you're out there and you'll, you'll pick up that, right now it's always been more of a herbaceous, leafy kind of aroma. Mm -hmm. um, now we're going to start getting fruit aromas, right. um, fruit flavors in, in those berries. Um, and that, that's just a little uh, something I just, you know, thinking about. Sure, sure. The whole uh, uh, nose on this, the aromas are just uh, wonderful. One of the things I'm interested in about this Petit Syrah um, is how do you tame the tannins in, in this grape? Because it's it, it can be... It can be. It can be pretty intense. It can be. And, and as I taste this, this is ready to go. I mean, this is wonderful in terms of drinkability. And I'm always fascinated how a winemaker will take a grape that is known for a high tannic structure um, and just literally tame it. So what, what, you know, what are you doing the winemaking to make this, this uh, uh, grape? Well, for one thing, um, with the petite, we do end up using uh, more of American oak. Mm -hmm. um, American oak seems to have, the, again, it's the, the, the way... To stand up to it. Yeah. Right. The, the, the way the tannins interact, um, American oak uh, seems to work quite well. With mm -hmm. Petit Syrah, right, um, and even Zinfandel as well. Um, those, you know, those those barrels and those grapes tend to tend to work well together. Okay, wonderful, great. So, um, for the future, do you plan to stay at the current production? Do you plan to grow? Um, any interesting new things that you're thinking about going forward? We're thinking that um, you know, for the immediate future, um, we'd like to you know stay at this level. And, and perhaps in the future, um, look at sourcing some some other grapes. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, our goal right now is to be um, in a state winery, right. uh, grow our grapes. Uh, if we found another vineyard that we could acquire, then um, yeah, we we would consider consider that. But right now, our goal is to um, crush every grape we grow and mm -hmm. sell every bottle that, uh, that you know that, that that we cork up. So right. um, if if we get once we get to that level, then we'll be able to start really kind of thinking about. What's the next step? Right. And and your website is uh, V-I-S-Z-L-A-Y, VizlayVineyards.com. John, thank you so much for spending time with us this morning. Thank you. It's a pleasure meeting you. It's my pleasure. Thank you.